Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel George. I'm a medical oncologist at uh, Duke University, professor of medicine and surgery in the Duke Cancer Institute. And it's my pleasure to moderate this uh, session today for GU Oncology Now. Uh, and with me today are three of my colleagues. I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, first is uh, Oliver Sarter. Oliver? Yeah. Uh, hi, Dan. Glad to be here today. I'm uh, Oliver Sarter. I'm a medical oncologist. I'm the medical director of the Tulane Cancer Center down in New Orleans. And uh, really a pleasure to be able to have good folks like uh, you to chat with today. Fantastic. Great to have you, Oliver. And uh, next is Preston. Preston? Hi. Uh, thank you, Dan, for the opportunity to talk with you guys today. Um, my name is Preston Sprankel. I am a urologic surgeon and a urologic oncologist uh, at Yale University. Welcome. Welcome, Preston. Good to have you as well. And then last but not least is, uh, is Raina. Raina McKay. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Dan. I'm Raina McKay. I'm a GU medical oncologist at the University of California in San Diego. So great to be here with you. Fantastic. Well, it's good to have you all here. Um, you know, we had a fantastic GU uh, ASCO, our genitourinary cancer symposium, just last month, and a lot of new data coming out in prostate cancer, and a lot of excitement coming for some new therapeutics, including the uh, Lutetium 177 PSMA uh, data based on the Vision study, which which we heard and read about last year. Um, at this year's GU ASCO, there were several uh, abstracts that, that really highlighted some, some post hoc analyses from these. I thought we could start by kind of diving into some of this work and, and uh, in particular, you know, the, you know the, the things we're learning now, the implications of this work kind of going forward. And uh, Oliver, maybe you can start us off. Um, there was some work looking specifically at some predictors for response or resistance to um, Lutetium 177 PSMA based on some um, other imaging parameters besides the liver. Do you want to do you want to walk us through some of that data? Sure, Dan. I might just give a like a little bit on the Vision trial itself in case people are not familiar with it. So, sure. Vision trial was really pretty simple. Um, it was standard of care plus or minus PSMA Lutetium 177, and all the patients were very advanced metastatic CRPC, and that all failed a novel hormone like abirenza, at least one and maybe more, and that all failed at least one taxane. And it turned out that there was no role survival benefit. And very specifically, the inclusion criteria used PSMA PET selected patients. And the criteria we used in vision was to look at a metastatic lesion as defined by uptake greater than liver. And the liver is a little bit of an arbitrary, and I'm not really sure that we know how to optimally choose patients, but I'll simply say that there are other ways of doing it. You know, you can set like an SUV cutoff and maybe have the SUV cut off higher rather than lower. And um, there's gonna be a little bit of variation from patient to patient. So another way to look at it instead of SUV is looking at it like the parotid. So the parotid is, has a lot of PSMA uptake when you do a PSMA PET scan. If you ever went to PSMA PET, you know, the parotids and submandibulars all light up. And if you use that as a relative uh, uptake and compare it to the tumor, it's higher than liver. And if you use patients using the parotid as a baseline and said we want to choose patients that are more than the parotid, then guess what? these are very enriched for PSMA expression and you get a better response rate. I think one of the things we're finding out is that if you've got more PSMA expression, you're more likely to respond to the PSMA Lutetium 177. It's kind of intuitively obvious. We're still debating on what's optimal and you know how we ought to do this going forward. I think the FDA is gonna give the vision criteria for a PSMA uptake metastasis greater than liver, uh, but we're not through defining what's optimal and what's best for these patients. Well, I, I can't thank you all enough for uh, this, this really interesting, uh, I think, you know, uh, inspiring discussion around uh, Lutetium 177 PSMA and the potential rollout of this in the near future and, and what implications we have for this year and, and, and things to look forward to in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. And uh, on behalf of my uh, roundtable uh, colleagues, thank you all for listening today.